So far, MSI boards has shown themselves to be unprepared, under-equipped against the PCIe 4.0 standard and its gargantuous X570 chipset. And I have reviewed a few of them, a bunch of them, to be honest, none of which impressed me so far. Talking about the MSI boards. But with the Meg X570 Unify, MSI wants to change this. It's giving us this back to the fundamentals motherboard, which screams engineering, engineering, all the way up to its uh, deliciously dressed down industrial look. Wait, there's no RGB? Ah! No RGB. How does it turn a CPU then? MSI Megs is a more expensive, more engineered motherboard which aims to please the more enthusiast uh, builders out there, the ones who are uh, trying to squeeze this last drop of megahertz out of their CPU. And in that regard, uh, the Unify goes head to head against the Crosshair 8 Hero or, for example, the Auros X570 Ultra. And let me be clear. MSI is taking no prisoners, starting with the obvious. The Meg X570 Uni5 is a six layered ATX motherboard and six PCB layers is what you wanna see on a PCIe 4.0 motherboard. Um, components tends to bleed signal and interference with each other uh, on any motherboard. And the fact that you have more layers uh, gives us more isolation and less probability to have that interference causing a blue screen or any kind of stability issue. So yes, MSI definitely did a good thing here and did provide solid fundamentals to the Unify to start with, big kudos. It's AM4 CPU socket can support both the Ryzen 2000 and Ryzen 3000 CPU series. Note that the board PCIe 4.0 abilities, which double its available bandwidth, will only be unlocked when coupled with the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. VRM wise, well, uh, let me start by uh, throwing a little booger to MSI for claiming on their website that this board was a 12 direct phases. I didn't exactly say that, but they wrote 12 plus two phases, which in view of the controller is not. It can only support up to six phases. So we do have 12 power stages, but organized in a six parallel configuration. And claiming otherwise uh, was silly. Silly, because 12, 60 amps power stages, even configured in a less agile, six phases configuration is gigantic, it's monstrous, even uh, when overclocking a 16 physical core. Actually, this is the very same VRM that you will find on more expensive MSI boards, like the Ace or the $600 Creation, or Creative, sorry. But what really made this VRM stand out and unique is its cooling solution, which, which is the star of this review, in my opinion. We have this massive, gigantic, heavy, beautiful two stages heatsink linked by a copper pipe for better heat transfer. I mean, look at this. The entire IO roofing is made of metal. I never loved anything coming from MSI. I mean, I like some stuff, but I, I never really adored anything they made, but here, that is a game changer. And I love the fact that they sacrifice the old RGB aesthetic kind of thing to the profit of a better cooling system of a more efficient and manufactured product. I love this. Even when severely overclocking a 3900X, the PCB juncture points never went beyond 65 degrees Celsius, 55 on the MOSFET, which make this board probably the coolest, most heat efficient uh, available in the entire MSI X570 series. Rearrange this sentence where needed, but you do get my point. And coming from a company which is known for its bad VRM uh, uh, heating, heat efficiency or cooling uh, uh, discrepancy, it is surprising. So big international kudos 
to MSI for this. All right, memory wise, we are dealing with the usual dual channel configuration able to support up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM overclockable, yes, that's a word, up to an insane five gigahertz. And I think the only other motherboard I've seen doing so is an Asus one, the ROG Crosshair 8 Impact uh, Mini ITX board, which I think is the only one I saw going that fast. And it's really, really rare. And the fastest clock you can hope to run on any motherboard today. On its left, we have our 11 watt X570 chipset. And 11 watt, well, that, that is quite hot. And that is precisely why we do have this expensive, big uh, fan equipped heatsink, which on its own without the fan uh, would do a great job at keeping our chipset cool, or at least to delay it before thermal thermal throttle, which is a good uh, news because the fan is quite noisy in my taste. And frankly talking, I think that MSI should have gone with a more silenced Delta turbine solution, which by the way, all the other manufacturers out there went for Hint, hint, MSI. Back to the memory, we do have three M.2 solid state drive connectors, which can all swap up to 32 gigabit per second in a PCIe 3.0 configuration. But couple our board with a Ryzen 3000 CPU and unlock our PCIe 4.0 board abilities and our stick bandwidth doubles up to a crazy 64 gigabit per second. In either case, this will make our sticks really, really hot. And that's precisely why we have three rather thick and thermo padded heat shield, which does a great job at keeping the thermo throttling Yeti away. Thermo throttling Yeti. <laughs> Laurent, you are so funny. Export wise, we have five PCIe exports, two single slot, single speeds. I like to call them bachelors, uh, cause they're single slot and single speeds and three 16 slots with different speeds. Note that only the first 16 slot can deliver up to 16 full bus speed. Therefore, this is where you'd need to put your video card for optimal performances. The second and third 16 slots can both deliver up to an impressive eight bus speed, meaning that they can all comfortably support video cards for a two-way NVIDIA SLI configuration or a three-way AMD Crossfire. That also explains why the three of them have been metallically reinforced. So definitely a great board. Uh, to run video intensive tasks such as video editing, rendering, and etc. But things get even more interesting if you couple the board with a Ryzen 3000 CPU, therefore unlocking the PCIe 4 ability of our PCIe slots, because it will double effectively its bandwidth ability from one gigabyte per second per lane to two gigabyte per second per lane. And that's great, that's amazing but almost useless right now because all of the available video cards today are below the PCIe 3.0 uh, bandwidth standard. They still do not bottleneck that PCIe 3 standard. So great for future proofing, but that's about it for now. Moving to our back IO, first let me note the presence of a pre-mounted padded IO plate, always a good start. And starting from the left, we have a clear CMOS and flash button, always very useful in BIOS manipulation. Our dual band Wi-Fi 6 200X adapter, which transfers theoretically up to 2.5 gigabit per second. A PS2 combo connector for the 1992 nostalgics. Two USB second generation plugs, two 5 gigabit per second plugs, four 10 gigabit per second USB plugs, including a type C, a 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, which is a rather premium feature for this price range. So well done MSI, well done indeed. And finally, our usual 8 channel 1220 Realtek codec, which takes full advantage of the six layered PCB since each left and right audio channels are traced on dedicated PCB, ensuring complete signal isolation and giving us a, a static free experience in both recording and audio rendering in gaming and etc. So a big, big kudos audio-wise to MSI. And I am not that shocked not to see a video output because, uh, yeah, uh, when you're going for such a motherboard, a performance-centric motherboard, you're going to go for a dedicated video card and you're not going to go for a four-core APU uh, processor. So not shocked. I think overall it's a pretty well balanced and even rich uh, back I.O. for the $300 mark. So. Yeah, again, kudos to MSI for this. Front connector wise, well, MSI continues to do rather well with the Unify. We have two second generation USB connectors, two five gigabit connectors, and yes, a 10 gigabit per second type C front panel connector, which is not easy to say, but I definitely was looking for it, especially uh, on a $300 board and very happy to see it 
indeed. Cooling wise, we do have seven well dispersed fan connectors, one of which can be used as a dedicated 5DC water pump connector. And, and, and there, I'm not impressed because when you're going for an enthusiast board, you always want to entertain the idea that you're going to have a dual uh, custom water cooling uh, configuration on it. So having a second water pump connector would have made sense, but more importantly, I would have loved to see all of those connectors uh, being hybrid connectors, meaning that they could all individually um, support anything you throw at it. A flow sensor, water pump, P PWM fans, and, and it does give that enthusiastic, centric agility that such a motherboard should be able to, to deliver. Moving on to the troubleshooting part, starting with a QLED screen for precise troubleshooting and not always available at this price range. Yes, Horace, I'm looking at you. A four LED easy debugger to further refine our debugging experience because this is all about refinement, right? We wanna refine our motherboard debugging experience. And finally, we have two backlitted starts and reset soldered button and there. That is ideally all the debugging stuff that any motherboard should have, at least X570 motherboard should have at that price range. So yeah, kudos, kudos, kudos to MSI. I am flushing MSI with kudos on that one. Now the best part for the end, RGB wise. <laughs> well, we got nothing, nothing deliciously refreshing. Refreshingly, nothing. No I.O. roof RGB, no chipset RGB, no PCB RGB. To the benefit of a better engineered and cooled motherboard. And it looks so much cooler. And marketing wise, MSI did a really, really clever move here by, you know, going for less is more. Uh, the fact that we have no RGB uh, strips uh, nested in it really make it a, a standout product, especially when it's uh, such a good looking product in the same time, paradoxically. But fear not, you rainbow warriors, because there are still uh, RGB connectors, which you can use for your RGB strip export. Three of them to be precise, including two addressable ones. In short, if you wanna mess with your family's optical nerves, you still can. Now, in conclusion, the MEG MSI X570 Unify will cost you about 300 bucks and it does tick all the right boxes. I mean, it really gets everything right, even starting at its foundations. We have the six PCB layers, a powerful VRM, awesome, awesome cooling features, including that deliciously extended VRM heatsink, which I hope other manufacturers will take cue and, and replicate. Sure, I do have a couple of critics. I would have loved to have hybrid fan connectors, a CPU-less boot to BIOS, or even a quieter uh, chipset fan. But nothing to overall dilute the excellence of the Unify. And frankly talking, MSI did need a good board because the entire series south to the ace is basically crap. And normally I would tell the competition, hey, you know what? Look at MSI, watch and learn. But here I'm telling MSI, to watch and learn from their own product. I do not know who came up with that board. I do not know the engineer who came up with, with the design and the idea. But that guy, you need to promote and definitely give him more responsibilities because he got something right. So basically, if you are looking for, well, the most performant build you can possibly run for a 16 physical core and with the broadest amount of feature and the best cooling solution, well, this is where your money needs to be.